how kids think is a mystery to most parents, but my next guest is sort of taking away the guesswork. We'll go inside the mind of a child next. So what I'm hearing you say is moms maybe don't panic over the phrase, I'm bored. No, embrace the boredom. Welcome back to Studio 5. Have you ever felt overwhelmed trying to keep up with your little ones? I'm saying me, me, yes, me. Well, my next guest says, knowing your child's thoughts will help you be a more patient and a more understanding parent. It's day four of our series, Inside Their Brain, and today we're looking at what's happening in your kid's head. Therapist Kristen Hodgson is here. And what a, it's, it's both a fun assignment and maybe an overwhelming assignment. To right. say, take us inside the child's brain. We know they're creative. We know they're sparky. We know they're adorable. Are we going to like what? else is happening inside those noggins? I think so because once we start to understand what's going on it'll help us have a little bit more empathy a little bit more understanding and a little like oh you're just a growing little person and we'll be more understanding a good I word. think so yeah empathetic the first thought you say you'd like parents to be more aware of is that children have bursts of anger actually when they're flooded with any emotion yes and I I think this was is important because for me I've got a three-year-old mm. tantrums are happening all the time my husband likes to say she turns into the Hulk <laughs> and what happens is dr. Daniel Siegel says kids are actually in that moment they're flipping their lid like the, the thinking part of their brain shuts off uh -huh. and they're not in a rational state they get flooded and so they can't we, we need to work to calm them and then we can start talking so if we're like sit down be rational or try, it's if not we're trying to work. control it and contain it. Yes, and and it's really not a manipulative tactic. It's a I'm just overwhelmed and I can't emotionally regulate at this stage of my development. I need your help to help me regulate. So the takeaway is don't try to control or command. Right. Just let them kind of feel it out. Sometimes also wrapping them in a hug and physically holding them to help them calm down can be. I know for my daughter, I need to just let her be for a minute and unwind mm -hmm. and then check back in. I think just the visual of the lid. I flipping, know. It's so good. You just painted an empathetic stroke for us right there as parents, right? Yeah. Knowing that they can't regulate that themselves. Yes. Thought number two, children don't respond to multiple commands because their brain can't keep up with those layered, no. layered details. So the brain is actually being built from the bottom up. So they're getting more complex uh, connections the older they get. And so when we're asking them to pick up their shoes for the 200th time and we're like, I just told you this. It's because they literally don't have the infrastructure to just keep doing these tasks. While this may seem simple, organizing your day, organizing your time, remembering what you need to do is a complex task that comes with time as their brains are growing. So one at a time is the takeaway? One at a time and to not be like, okay, after you brush your teeth, I need you to pick up your shoes and then go hang up your shirt. They won't be able to track it to be like, okay, what I need you to do next pick up your shoes let them just do that uh -huh. before you then move on to the next task which takes patience for, as Absolutely. the role of mom because you're trying to kind of fire off the day and get things going right so that one at a time feels less efficient but for them it's the only way to communicate and it can make it so that we're not nagging we're just focusing on this one thing one task yeah children like unstructured play because you really want to point out and emphasize this and underscore it with a big bold marker yes. play is work in a child's mind it is and as much as we want to create these structured play activities that are really cute with all of the decor they need that unstructured uh, play because that's how they're working out the world around them they get to create scenarios where they get to then become the master of their world they get to try on adult roles they get to work through emotions they get to try on all these things and so if we're always intervening and structuring them for that or structuring that for them mm -hmm. they don't get to do that they don't get to work out their world and be in charge of it so what I'm hearing you say is moms maybe don't panic over the phrase I'm bored no embrace the boredom like in our neighborhood we had a, a boredom thing happen where the kids were bored and I was like shoot what are you gonna do with that Shucks darn. I know <laughs> and then what ended up happening is we had a creek that wasn't very full and before we know it they were building spending their time building rocks to create a pool and then they created lifeguards and a whole like oh, the whole neighborhood had this we had lifeguards we had flyers being sent out to recruit people to come <laughs> to the River Creek pool oh my god and it's because they were bored and they had a chance to then create and compete with our local community pool was their goal. <laughs> They're so giving you a run for their business dollars. Right. And I saw, I think it was 25 cents admission. 25 cents admission, like yep. And um, what did they say? It was all natural. The creek was all natural. <laughs> and so, that came out of nothingness. Nothing. That wasn't created. That just was letting them be and do their thing and to be in charge of like, they had managers and, and my son was delegating and it was just fascinating to awesome. watch. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. That's so cute. Finally, you say when children daydream, you want parents to recognize this as 
important, even positive. It is. It's a reset for the brain. If we think about all the things they're doing in a day, sometimes just it's like a, an awake nap. And they need to be able to reset, regroup. The brain needs a moment. And so just let them be. It's not necessarily, it's not the same as screens and just zoning out, zoning out on a screen. That's different. Looking at the clouds, letting them just kind of zone off, or you know that staring mm -hmm, thing, letting them mm -hmm. do that, that's important. Our brains need to rest. I love when I look in the back seat and Emmy is just gazing out the window yes. or just looking off in the distance, and now I'll have to withhold because my tendency is to always say, what are you thinking about? Like, what, uh -huh. what are you thinking about? But right. just sit back and let it just happen. Just let it be. All right, Kristen, yes. great advice. If people want more more advice from you, where can they connect? They can go to thehealinggroup.com or on Instagram at Kristen B. Hudson. Inside a child's mind. This was important, and I think you're right, empathizing for a lot of parents. Yes, out there. Good. We appreciate it. Thanks. All right, when we come